Hi, we are going to look at two effective ways by which we have been spoiling our sleep. Before that, let us look at two chemicals in our brain which regulate our sleep. They are melatonin and adenosine. Let's look at it one by one. Melatonin helps in onset of sleep. It's produced by a gland deep inside the skull called pineal gland. Now the melatonin secretion will start after the sunset around 7 or 8 o'clock and it peaks around 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. and then it starts dropping. By the time the sun comes, there is hardly any melatonin. Now how does pineal gland know when to secrete melatonin? So here comes another region called suprachiasmatic nucleus. Now supra means above. Chiasma is a crossover. Nucleus is a set of neurons together. Let's see what chiasma is. When we see something, the visual impulses fall on a screen at the back of our eye called retina. From here, it's taken as neural impulses, almost like microelectrical impulses. And it goes in what is called as visual pathway to the, to the visual cortex, that is in the posterior part of our brain. Now, while going, the visual impulses from the lateral side of our vision will cross over. Now, this crossover is called optic chiasma. And just above this crossover, the group of cells are called suprachiasmatic nucleus. So the suprachiasmatic nucleus knows how much light is coming through these pathways. So when the light is intense, there is a lot of light, daylight, the suprachiasmatic nucleus gives a feedback to the pineal gland to stop secreting melatonin. And when the light goes down, when sunset happens, the suprachiasmatic nucleus senses that there is less light coming through the optic pathways, tells the pineal gland, now you can start producing melatonin. And once melatonin production starts, the person feels sleepy and it aids in the person drifting to sleep. Now, how do we humans mess with this? Now, long before Thomas Alva Edition found out a bulb, we were using fire or lamp to stretch the night a little longer. But the light is very dim and wouldn't have affected our suprachiasmatic nucleus. Edison's bulb made us stretch the day a little longer because now shops can be illuminated, so shops can be kept open for another two hours. People can be on the road for another two hours because lights are there. But Edison's bulbs were at least above our head. There was a newer invention where the light was directly put into our eyes, the television. Initially, television was for a limited time. Then there were 24 hours television. And soon, there were computers and internet. Once internet came, there is some friend somewhere in the world who is awake and that gave you enough motivation to be awake and converse with them. Not long ago, we were able to access internet only through desktop computers. They were bulky, can't be moved around, so they will be sitting in a fixed place. We use them and then we put it off and go to sleep probably in a different room. Then came mobile phones. Now the mobile screens were traveling with us wherever we went, including our bed. The bright light from the mobile phone, especially the blue light, can trick our suprachiasmatic nucleus into thinking it is still daytime. And the suprachiasmatic nucleus would tell our pineal gland not to produce melatonin yet. Now a bit about blue and red lights in our phone. Blue lights are short waves, have shorter wavelength, but high frequency and carry high energy and they will be bright. And that is why they are used in the phone. On the other hand, red lights are long waves, have longer wavelength, lower frequency. But 
they are very pleasant and relaxing to look at. What would you prefer, a candlelight dinner or a tube light dinner? Of course, a candlelight dinner. That's because of the warm light effect of the candle, the red light, which will make you feel relaxed and pleasant. On the other hand, a tube light with its brightness because of the blue light will make you feel alert. Similarly, the blue light from your mobile can make your suprachiasmatic nucleus think it is daytime and delay production of melatonin by the pineal gland. And this has been substantiated by many recent studies. This is one of the ways by which we have started messing with our sleep. The second chemical that helps to regulate sleep is called adenosine. It's not the same as the ATP in muscles. This is a different adenosine in the brain. Adenosine level keeps increasing for every hour of wakefulness. And if you are awake for 18 to 20 hours, the level of adenosine is very high. And this makes the person have an urge to fall asleep. For this reason, adenosine is also called as sleep pressure. Adenosine works by acting on a receptor in the brain called adenosine receptors. And then there are subsequent changes taking place and this induces sleep. Once you start sleeping, the adenosine level comes down. And this is a cycle which happens every day. We use light to mess with melatonin. Now, can you guess what we use to mess with adenosine? Your guess is right. Coffee. Caffeine's chemical structure is very similar to adenosine. And how caffeine acts is, when you take coffee, it goes and sits in the adenosine receptors. So, an analogy would be, it's like a key. Adenosine goes like a key into the lock and opens and then sleep starts. Now when you take coffee, that goes and sits in the receptor. That is, it goes and blocks the keyholes. And even if there is high level of adenosine, the person cannot feel sleepy, the person would be alert. So this is the second way by which we have been messing with our sleep. What can we do to have a good sleep? One is avoid gadgets at least an hour or two before we plan to sleep. If you have to use, then use the gadget in a dark mode or with warm light settings. Now all the gadgets, all the operating systems like Windows, iOS, Android, all of them have this warm light setting. But the best option would be not to use a gadget for at least an hour before going to bed. Instead, you can read a book with warm light around. Similarly, you can avoid coffee after 5 p.m. I wish you all a very good sleep every night. Thank you for staying this long. If you like this video, please tell four of your friends. Stay tuned because Mindscape matters. Bye.